Now we're gonna run a really quick command. First, see who is the winner out of you. And Salman is the winner. Yay! <laughs> Who here knows about arrays? So ideally, array is supposed to have a collection and that collection could be of similar sort of items. It could be different sort of items as well. But let's talk about what are the possibilities for this one. For instance, we could have an array and we can generate an array in, in a couple of methods. So first method or the easiest method that usually is used word is by doing something like this. So we say, let's say week or days in week. This is a variable and this is an this is an empty array. All right. So this is how you would create an empty array in javascript there is a container we could call it container so as we said before if we talk about variables you could consider them like this so we have memory block and we store variables we have to put something in place for instance if you get let's say this mobile and you have to put it somewhere then you would see which container do i put into let's say if you have a drawer or a cupboard then you would have to place it at a certain place similarly when we create variables they go inside a place in memory for instance if i have a variable that is my name then that potentially goes somewhere in the memory and it also then has a value all right so you could consider it like some sort of a table so here imagine that this is sort of the table so my name could have a value and this could be let's say sn now this is just one variable so this is just for you to visualize how this would look we are imagining this so essentially we have this variable name and this is the value that you put there now similarly if you had to have another variable that is my age then you would have its value as well which is here so let's say we call it 30 and now we have this age variable as well now all these variables they do have a place in memory so let's say this is the memory this particular name this sort of has a reference so essentially there would be a location in memory for this which we also call memory reference similarly this variable also has a location similarly if we create an array that is sort of the same thing so if we let's say create an array which we just were talking about so days in week so if this is an array then that means that it has some values but it could have multiple set of values so ideally it should look something like this it could be it would be monday then tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday and sunday so all of these values that we have are kind of bound to one variable but when you have to access each individual item then you would refer to an index for this one so for instance when i have to just talk to tuesday then i i have to work through this days and week but then i have to say oh okay in this variable which index does this point to and this is what we are going to see right now as well so when we talk about indexes the indexes start essentially from zero so if i just copy paste this this is how it would look ideally so we have zero one two three four five six and these are the indexes where we can get these values from so this is just sort of a theory behind how the arrays could look because this same array contains multiple values these are sort of elements within the array themselves right so when we try to code them we initiate this with an empty array but then we start to build these values so you see that this days and week should have all these elements so here we would start with monday so we can provide the string monday and then for each new value we can separate that by a comma then we have tuesday similarly then we would have wednesday so let's quickly do that wednesday thursday friday saturday finally we have sunday so this is how an array looks like now if you compare this with a single variable which was let's say my name the my name has a string and just the string but in this array we are actually having this string but inside this square block so inside this block so it could have only one item then we would mean that we have an array but then it has only one item it could have two items like this which means that it has a string and then it also has another string or it could have seven items right so let's begin with this concept so we have days and week and then we have all this now let's just console log it days in week and then we can see what logs when we run this application so if i have to console log this i'm gonna go to console and here i'm gonna kind of bring it up a bit and now if i just refresh you can see that we see this value right here and this is an array so we have a monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday but what else do you see on the screen the indexes that i told you about so exactly these indexes like 
0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It always starts with 0 and then it moves one step above. So 0 to 6. On 0, we have Monday. On 1, we have Tuesday, 2, Wednesday, 3, Thursday and so on. Now, if I have to get a particular value, what I want to do is I'm going to have to just say that, hey, first I would point to this particular variable and then I also need to point to then I would have to see, hey, which index am I talking about? Am I talking about Tuesday? Am I talking about Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Which one? So if we are just talking about Wednesday, that means that we have to point to the index 2. Why? Because the first one has 0, then 0, 1, 2. So if I have to talk to this array days in week, then we have all these things. But if I have to get out this Wednesday, as we saw here, then the index should be referred to 2. So here we could say days in week. And here the number that we can provide is going to be inside this bracket. So we can say bracket and then 2 and then bracket close. And here you can see that we are fetching Wednesday. All right. Does that make sense? So we got this array. So the first thing that we discussed was how to create an array. The second thing that we are discussing right now is how to access a particular array. And you can do that easily by doing this. Similarly, if I had to get Thursday, that would be three. Friday would be four. Saturday would be five. And Sunday would be six. If I go beyond this, then I'm going to start getting undefined because there are no values for these, these numbers. So if I say 10, there's nothing there. But if I say zero, then it's Monday. It's the first one. All right. So I hope this makes sense. So this is a simple explanation of what an array looks like. Now, we could talk about different things when it comes to array. We could talk about looping. We could talk about other things as well. I don't think we have gone through looping so far. We could also discuss about how to create the array in, in some different ways as well. So we have one that we discussed that is creating it by just, just declaring the name or just using the square brackets. The other thing that we can do is using the array constructor. So have any of you been using the array constructor for creating an array? Because that is that is something I have not been doing at all. So I have not done the new array syntax. But another way of doing this would be that you would do something like if I had to remove this or comment this one out. Another way to declare this is doing cons days in week. And then here we could say new array. And here then we could provide the value of the array itself. So if we could do something like if we have to use all of these numbers, something like this. So if we do this refresh, you see we have exact output. As I said that this array syntax is a new one. So if we got rid of it and just initiated the first one, then we are talking about a simple array. But if I wanted to print every element on console, what I would have to do is I would have to do something like this. So this is going to print the first one, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. So I'm going to have to change one, two, three, four, five, six. And now if I go to my browser and refresh, you can see all the data here, right? Uh, the only problem is that this is inefficient and this could lead to a lot of code duplication as well. So what we could do is we could run a loop and in the loop, we could use this number one by one by starting from zero and ending on six. So on every iteration, we will get a new number and then we'll use that number for, for kind of showing these values. So first let's create a loop that just prints that number that is this number and not the actual value. So here the way to write loops in JavaScript is you start with a for then you open this bracket then you type in the initial value and the variable name for this number that increases on each step. So for this one we are going to say let i equals to zero. So this i is essentially index so we can call it index actually then we can say i is less than whatever number we want to say. So we could say, let's say seven. Then we could say I plus plus, which means that we are going to increase this number every time. And then we just need to console.log it. And this is index. So we are going to be using index here. And then here we're going to print that. Now this means that we are running a loop in which we start from the number zero. Then we are putting this condition that is evaluated on every iteration, every step. And then after each step, we increase the number by one. So index plus plus is actually equal to index equals to index. So it's exactly the same thing. So we can do either that or this one. It doesn't matter. So index plus plus is a short form. So let's try this out. So I'm going to go to sources and go to main.js and show you it right away. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here, refresh and just around the for loop, I'm going to put the breakpoint. So here the, the array is declared now. We got the array, but now we are going 
doing in the for loop you can see that at this point this index is undefined because the first step for the for loop is to define this variable and assign it with zero so this is a variable index we are generating this creating this and now we have the index value set to zero so this is the first step the second step the loop takes is that it checks this condition is the value of index less than seven is it and it is so it's zero it's less than seven then it goes inside this block and runs this code after this would have run this code then this will come to this step okay so now it will go inside and run this code this is now console.log index which is zero so right now we don't have anything on console if i move forward you see that we got this zero now it has it will go to this particular code and will increase the value by one so now it should have you you can see that this is at this point now and now it will increase it by one now the index value becomes one now it would go again back to this condition so the process goes like initiate check condition run this code increment then check condition then run this code then increment check condition run code increment check condition run code so this is the flow that works with the for loop so now that we have incremented it now it's checking hey is one less than seven yep it is it's gonna go inside now it's gonna run this for the value one so here you can see it's zero now it's gonna be one and then it will go for increment okay so now it's a one now it's incrementing it it will increase this to two and then we'll check condition so now it's checking is two less than seven yes it goes inside it console logs it then it increments again it increments two to three checks three less than seven yes goes inside logs this then it checks increments three to four comes here checks the condition goes inside increments four to five checks condition goes inside increments it to six checks condition goes inside and now you can see that on console we have all the values 0 1 2 3 4 5 and now it's going to press 6 now that we have 6 here it will now check a uh, first increment it so now you will see that this 6 will become 7 and now the condition is being checked is 7 less than 7 which is not the case so it's going to be false so now it will not go inside because this condition is not evaluating to true it's going to come outside so it's going to come outside and then not log anything and now we have 0 to 6 log so i hope this makes sense we could also have said that hey if index is less than or equal to but then we would have to say six because we want to print zero to six so in this condition it would go to six so here i could actually put a block variable which is index here you can see that if i look here at this point you will see that it initiates with zero logs increments to one then checks condition goes forward and similarly if i go towards let's say five now it will check the condition go inside log the value five then it will come here increment this to six check the condition six is less than or equal to six now since this is less than or equal to this will still be true and since it is true it will go inside now after logging this value six it will come again to increment this to seven and now since this is seven you can see that this value will not be true because index is seven it's not less than it's not equal to six so now it won't go forward so there are two ways to do this you could either use a less than sign with one value above the target use less than and equal to the target all right so we wanted to print from zero to six that's why we use zero and then here we are using equals to six now this is the same as if you wanted to do zero to hundred so if you wanted to print zero to not 200 but hundred then it's going to be the same so it's, it will start from zero and then it will go 200 so if i just refresh this now you see that it starts from zero and then it goes towards hundred so this is one reason the other method would be to not use equals here and just use a less than sign but then you would have to make it 101 because you want to go to 100 so if i do this and not change 100 then it will go towards 99 because 100 is not included in this condition so you either include it using the equal sign or you make this value one above 100 which means that now it will go towards 100 because 100 is less than 101 so if i refresh now you can see 100 here you could also change this to any other number for instance now it is starting from 0 but if you want it to start from 10 then you can pin 10 so it will be 10 to 100 so if i refresh now you should be able to see that this is starts from 10 then 11 12 blah 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 and goes here to 100 so now that we know that this array that we have if i log it again console.log and days and week if i log this again you see that we have these index 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 which means it starts at 0 and then it ends at 6 so we want to go from 0 to 6 so here i could change this 10 to 0 and i could change this equals to 7 because we want to go to 6 so 1 less than 7 is 6 
and then here we are going to use the plus plus operator which means the increment by one only one and now if we see the logs you see that we got zero one two three four five six so i'm gonna log this again sorry about that so console.log days in week and here you can see that we got monday tuesday blah 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 and zero to six now we are saying zero which means if i put this condition and log you will see monday seven times why because if i refresh and put breakpoint you will see that it goes inside the loop and then it logs days in week index zero here index zero means monday so instead of this hard coded zero what if we could use the value of index every time because in the loop the value index updates every time so if i go and play you see that index becomes one two three four the value is changing in each iteration so why cannot we use index instead of hard coded zero so for that if we replace this zero with this index that means we are accessing the next item of array each time the first time we come in the index is zero all right so we are talking about days in week zero which is monday if i play and come back again with the new index which is one then days in week one is tuesday so here the index now is one and days in week is tuesday so that's cool because now we can remove all of that code so if i show you the code before this was the code that we were trying to access now this is just days imagine you had to work with 2000 students or 200 students and had to do the same thing print their names so you would have to go and copy paste the line 200 times to print the the usernames of 200 people so instead of that you could only run you could simply run a loop from 0 to 200 and then just use the index so that makes it quite dynamic so here if we use index and save and here if i refresh now you see the same thing it's coming from the same line of code which is main.js line number 14 and if i open this this is the exact same line that is printing for every single day how to add elements to array for instance if i have an array which is days in week how do i add more items to this array and we could have sort of different examples for this let's say if we have an array that has um, some elements so let's say numbers or my favorite numbers here we have an array that is initiated because we are creating this array right now so the default values are three four and seven now this is my array which is favorite numbers so if i refresh now see the value of my favorite numbers it's three four and seven and as we know the first element element as is at index 0 the second one is at index 1 third one is at 7 previously we had an array of strings now we have an array of numbers now you could actually have an array of emojis let's say we have an apple we also have watermelon so as a string we could use watermelon then we have a strawberry let's say we have a strawberry here and save this now if i had to log this i would do console.log roots and if i save this now you can see we got an array of different different emojis so if i wanted to add another item to this array the method that we use is called push so we can do something like roots which already has these three elements we could add by using the push method and here we can call this function but with a new value now we can provide this string and this grapes as the value that we want to push into this array so you can see that we are saying hey the push is already an array oh sorry the fruits is already in an array and we are pushing another item into that array if i do this now you can see that when i use fruits now this actually shows us these four elements so that's how you add another item to an array so now if i say fruits you can see that we have this this new element now so this is a really basic way of adding something into an array that's super cool but you see that when we push something to an array the position that it gets to is the last position so if i open it now you see that the initial 0 1 2 3 is exactly the same we got a new element at position 3 or index 3 and this is the grape that we just pushed now we could have pushed this multiple times so let's push let's say two more times and now if we see the fruits array you see that now we got three grapes because we pushed three times so whenever we push an item to an array it goes towards the end this is the important part to understand is there a possibility that somehow we could just add this element to the beginning of the array which means here at the top right because imagine that you have a list of users let me show you a scenario for instance we got something like const top followers for instance i can see we have fahad here then we have raja here we probably had sebel here we have salman here we have usman here as well let's say we got a new follower who has been following who has been chatting with us who has been asking questions who has been practicing and who has developed a lot of cool things if we wanted to show that person at the top of this array how would we show that
that so let's say if we had to just console log this uh one by one just like using this loop for instance because we are gonna have to use this loop to show them uh, in sort of a list so i'm gonna copy this loop and then i'm gonna i'm gonna use this uh loop so we have right now five items one two three four five one of the things that we can also do if we don't know the length of how much we need to go forward to because we have to start from zero but if we add more items to this this particular array then we are going to have more numbers here for instance right now it's zero to five because we are going to go from zero one two three four these are the indexes that we have but if we add more items then it's going to be one more so it's going to be then six if i add one more item it's going to be seven so instead of that we can just use the length here and i'm going to explain to you what that means but let's say if we wanted to use top followers and show this like this i'm going to comment this for now go back to the code and see you can see all the names now how do we get these names let me quickly show you in the code so here if i refresh you will see that this array is not initialized yet but if i go one step forward this array is initialized with five elements we have zero uh, or we have Fahad at 0 which means Fahad is right now at the top then we have Raja at 1, Sebel at 2, Salman at 3 and Usman at 4 now when we go inside first we initialize this with index set to 0 now index is set to 0 and now we're checking if index is less than top followers dot length and this length actually is 5 now you know that this followers has the maximum index as 4 and we have to go 2 to 2 4 that means if we say 5 and if we say less than here that means that it's going to go from 0 to 4 so whatever the length becomes we can actually loop over it and then we can show that in the ui now if i come down here and if i refresh kind of remove this i'm gonna kind of shorten this down as well and if i go to the console you see that we have fahad raja sebel salman usman let's say we get a new follower who is really good uh and who is now the top follower if i do a push here just like top followers dot push let's say the imaginary person who has joined us is john wick okay so if i now run this you will see that john wick actually came at the very bottom he's not at the top but this should show something like a top follower right so how do we make sure that this john wick doesn't go all the way bottom but is at the index zero the way to do that would be to instead of using this push method we use something called the unshift method so we do a unshift what this does is that instead of pushing this john wick to the end of the array unshift actually pushes that at the beginning of the array so let's try this out so i'm gonna do this do this refresh and now you will see that now the top followers has Fahad Raja, Sabil, Salman, Usman. This is the default array and Fahad is at zero right now. So when we use the unshift method, this will put John Wick at zero. All right. So we got two ways of adding an item to an array. One which adds it to the end of the array and second one that adds it at the beginning of the array. Now that we have John Wick at zero index, the first console log which has not been done yet when we come on inside you see that the index is zero and the top follower zero means john wick so now it will first print john wick and then print rest of it. so you can now add multiple items to the top of the array is that helpful is that something you knew already or is this new knowledge to you what do you think helpful okay sounds good so now we know how to add an item to the array when it comes to the top position so this is a use case that you could find helpful now how do we remove an item from an array let's say we have let's say we have this fruit basket and here we have this situation where we got the fruits but what i want is actually to take out this strawberry so if i want to take out an item from an array from the very end which means the last item in the array this is the first item this is the last item so if i have to remove it from the end of an array usman khan says by using shift yay quite close but not exactly uh shift does the opposite if you want to uh, remove something from the very end we use pop so we use uh fruits dot pop and this removes it from the end so now we will remove strawberry and if i check the fruits array now you see the apple is still there and the watermelon is also there but really good try usman it's really good to talk and kind of reflect what you think so you're close shift does the opposite now the next thing that we wanted to discuss was exactly the same thing what if i wanted to remove the first item <laughs> that's fine that's fine that happened the first item is apple so we if we do a fruit start shift that means that we are shifting the first item out of this array and the remaining items would be the watermelon and the strawberry so if i do shift 
you see that apple got out and now if i check fruits we only have the watermelon and the strawberry remaining all right so that's cool we know about shift we know about pop and we know about how to iterate over these items all right so we understand the shift as well now who can tell me if i wanted to remove an item from a specific place within the array how how would you do that it's not going to be removed from the beginning it's not going to be removed from the end it's going to be removed from the middle let's the splice method very good very good awesome so look like salman has done a lot of work so we're going to be using the splice method and the splice method essentially takes a couple of arguments and we can tell how many items to remove from which index and how many items so a splice works something like this you have splice and then you say index to start uh, uh start removing from and then the second one is how many items so this is sort of the syntax for splice so here what we can do splice is something like this. so gonna remove this one gonna go back to let's say the top followers or actually let's go to the first one the days in week so let's say we have the days in week being logged here and now what i want to do is just to remove this saturday and sunday and leave the rest of the items so monday to friday gets to stay but the rest of the items are to be removed so in order to do so what i can do is i can just say uh, days in week dot splice and as you can see here it says start which means we have to provide the starting index of where to start and then we need to say how many items to delete so you can see that if we talk about the index it's zero one two three four five so five is the index where we have to start and then we have to remove two items so here we could say five which is the index and then we need to delete two items okay so once we do this you can see that we remove saturday and sunday so if i now check the days in week you can see that we are only left with monday to friday right so this is a really handy uh, function of an array that you can use uh, to, to kind of remove items for a particular use case. Similarly, if we had to just keep these two and remove these two, what could we have done in that case? Can you, can you type the syntax in chat? What do you think would be in that case? So for right now, days in week, for just keeping the weekdays, we use this, which removed the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. What if we wanted to keep these two and remove all of these what would the code be in that case come on you can do it osman says lifo last in first out for push and pop and fifo was in first out for unshipped and shift that's that's actually accurate yes salman says five but then minus let's try this out raja says days in week zero five days in week is an array we need to use days in week dot splice so you're missing the splice function let's try what salman says so salman says we do what we do here is we do a days in week dot splice five and then minus two so in that case what do we have in left we have the entire array so when you say five that means we are starting from this but then minus two doesn't mean anything so it doesn't remove anything what raja said is quite uh quite accurate if we start with zero and we say with five that means that we are going to start from Monday, which is the index zero. And then we are going to remove one, two, three, four, five, which leaves us with Saturday and Sunday only. So if I do this, you can see that we remove Monday to Friday. And if I now check days and week, we only are left with Saturday and Sunday. All right. So this is how you would use the splice function for this situation. All right. All right. Um, cool, cool, cool. Just in a hurry. Okay. So now let's also talk about how if I had to remove something, from the array but then also add another thing with um what if zero minus three let's try this so we got zero but then minus three in that also case we don't remove anything maybe you're confu confusing splice with slice method which has a different use case so for this one you have days in week dot slice then we have start and add and we also have the end but i'm not even sure if if we have zero or three minus three in that particular so if you say minus three here then it it kind of removes it yeah you're probably confusing it with that so if you do minus two here then it does that so this is now returning saturday and sunday so a slice is a is a different method slice is a method that actually does not modify the original array but splice actually changes the original array so you can see if i run slice it, it gives us an output but it doesn't gives us um it doesn't change the days in week but if i did the same thing with splice then it changes the original value so if i do splice something like 5 2 then it actually changes the original array so now this is changed days and weekends is changed so yeah it's, it's the slice that you're probably thinking about all right let's say let's say that we have 
let's move this one let's see we got this set of fruits okay and what if i wanted to replace this this watermelon with grape using the splice method can i do that if i wanted to replace watermelon with a grape how would you do that how would you replace or let's say even let's say i want to remove this watermelon and add a grape instead or add two grapes instead what we would do is that we would say fruits dot splice here we're gonna say we want to remove watermelon so that means we are kind of gonna take the index which is one then we are going to say how many items do we want to delete and that's one because we want to get rid of this watermelon but then how many items do we want to add back or what do we if we want to add another thing in place of this then we can use this here so we can say string grape and that's it so if i do this then it would replace this watermelon with grape so if i now check fruits you can see that now we got grapes and not only this this grapes i could have actually added more grapes than one so i could have said one one and here i could give a comma and space and maybe multiple items here let's say three grapes and if i do this and check fruits you see that we got multiple grapes in between so there are multiple things happening here one we're removing an item from a place then we are replacing them with multiple items as well or we are not actually replacing but we are removing an item and then we are adding some items on the same index this one now we could have also done is we could have said hey just keep the melon here but right after the melon we want to add some item all right so if we do this we would want to say this as zero this as two so we are saying add the index two do not remove any item which is th with this zero but then add four grape so so at this index of the strawberry we are gonna add a couple of items so here if i now check you can see that between the strawberry and the lemon we have oh sorry watermelon we have all these grapes that we just added all right so this is how you would add a particular item inside or add a particular index uh, with this one when it comes to array this is essentially some of the methods that we could have talked about we do have uh, we do have the topic of multi-dimensional arrays as well but i'm not gonna go in that for now we have more things that we could discuss about from multi-dimensional arrays as well let's see what we can talk about so we do have some methods that we could use for instance if we had two different set of fruits we could have merged them together so that is about how we add two different arrays together so let's say if instead of fruits we had something like cons grape basket and here let's say we have a set of grapes let's say a couple of grapes and then we're gonna do the same for let's say apple so apple apple copy this space space and now we have some apple so we have now apples basket so if i wanted to now combine these two baskets first we have the grapes basket and then we have the apples basket how do you think we can combine it so we have first all the elements from apple and then then we have all the elements of grapes how can we do that but what we discussed was we wanted the apple before the grapes so first all the apples and then all the grapes so for that we would do something like apples basket dot on cat and then the grapes basket so that's one way of doing this and now you can see that first we got all the apples all the grapes so that is one way of doing that so we could have done something like start an array sorry start an array then we use the spread operator to spread both arrays one by one so we do a spread of apples basket then we use comma and then we do spread operator of grapes basket now that means that we are kind of using the spread operator for combining these two things and that's exactly the same thing as you can see the output is exactly the same thing but whatever we want first is gonna come first whether we are using the concat operator or if we are using the spread operators so yeah great job there both answers are exactly accurate cool um all right one of the things that we can also see is if i had to to have all this array but if i wanted to combine this as a string for instance if i have this whole array and what i want is to combine each element as a string what do you think we can do or convert this array to a string how can we combine this so for instance the output that i'm looking forward to is something like this and then how many do we have one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight doesn't exist and then we got grapes so we got one two three four five six 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 three four five six so we want something like this this is right now an array but now we're talking about converting this into a string now furthermore i could also do something like instead of just having this i could i would want to have something like an arrow something like this is that possible with any function from javascript can we do this somehow what we can do here is that we can say this array dot join and here if we don't provide anything you will see that we'll end up with a string that has commas in between which is sort of 
part of the default separator so this is converting this whole array into a string what do i mean by that for instance if i talk about let's actually do this in the code so we have the grapes basket we have the apple basket let's say we have a combined basket which is which is dot 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 apple basket and then comma dot 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 grapes basket then if i say combined basket this is what we have now what i want is to convert this into a string so for that we can take a variable and then we can call it let's say combined basket or we could call it basket string and then let's initiate it by empty string now this basket string that we want should contain all of these elements but separated by arrows so if i do combine basket dot join then i got something like this comma separate now we can change the separator by passing a string value of the separator just like this so if, if i provide this empty string that means there is no separator okay by default it's comma if we provide empty string there's no separator if i provide space you can see that this gets a space in between so we get space between all of these similarly instead of space i could do something like this so if i provide this as a separator then that's what we get out of it so this is how you would combine a string and then show this as this value now where is this useful why would i use this imagine that you have this days in week and you wanted to show that as a string so you could also do something like days in week dot join here and now you get all of this this is a nice little string separated by commas now you could also give some spacing between something like this and now you see that we have monday then we have comma without any space then we have a space and then we have something else you could also give between space between these two as well something like this so now you see it's a really nice string that you get out of it by combining this array so it's combining the days and week which is an array which is actually an array like this to a string which is like this so there's a difference between these two variables one is an array the second one is a string all right so i hope that this makes sense and we now know how to combine an array into a string or how to convert the values of an array and kind of move them into a string so this is really helpful in a lot of places that you will find in your in your programming journey now let's talk about something that we can say if i wanted to find an index of something how can i find it for instance let's say if we have all these good followers that we have so we have top followers and if i don't know where sable is how can i find which index is sable at so by looking at it i can definitely find it I I can say zero one two three so table is at three but in the code we don't see that so here i don't i don't know where sable is all right so if we get this data somewhere and i have to find the index of sable then one thing that we can do is use something like top followers dot index of and in this method we can provide something like the string sable so if it can find this string it gives you the exact output as you can see here it says three which means that sable is at three so if i check top followers you can see that sable itself is at three right but if you don't find it then what it returns back is minus one so if i say find and i say sorry not find but index of sable but i give a wrong spelling and say let's say sable two then it says minus one all right so this means that if there is a good answer or if something is found then we get the exact index otherwise we get minus one so if there's minus one that means we don't have that particular element in the string or in the array but if we have a number which is zero or greater than zero that means that we can find that element so index of is really helpful in finding out the exact place or the exact index of an element in your array now if you talk about fruits or let's say combined basket we can try to find something like this grape now if i try to search this and say index of grape you will see that it gives us eight so if i go from here zero one five seven eight so this is the eight here but we also have this one this one this one so there are more than one places where we can find this grape but it always gives you the first place where this is found so since it's found at eight that's why it's giving you eight but it's also at nine ten eleven but it will only give you the first instance if we wanted to get the last index or the last items index or the last occurrence of this element then we would use something like last index index of and this gives us the last index of this element so you can see here it's 13 so 13 is the last index which is here all right similarly if i had to find this for the apple you will see 7 because 7 is the last index of the apple here so you can use index of and the last index of to find a particular element okay if you wanted to find the indexes of each occurrence then you would have to write some code for that 
okay all right now that we know about concat we talked about index of we talked about last index of one of the things that i would like to do is do a reverse of the array so let's say we are talking about something like days and week. If I wanted to reverse this whole array, how would I do that? It's very simple. We do days and week dot reverse. And when we do that, you see it reverted. So we got Sunday, Saturday, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. This function is also helpful in certain scenarios where you would want to revert a situation, a reverse an array. So this is really helpful in those particular scenarios. So reverse is a really powerful method as well. Okay. Similarly, we, we could have another element when we we talk about sorting so let's say we have an array that has some numbers and then that number has two three one seven six five if we have this array and we want to sort this array out one of the things that we could use is the sort method so here we could say numbers dot sort and once we do that you can see that we get the number sorted in in the sorted order or in the in the ascending order all right so this is one way of doing that if you wanted to sort this in a descending order then you would have to give this a function so by default the sort adds it or sorts it in the ascending order but if you wanted to sort it in the descending order then you would do sort but then here you would have to provide a compare function something like this in this one we get the previous and the next value and then we can return the value based on answers so if previous is less than the next one then we return Return minus one else we return a one so if we do this you will see that it does exactly the same as before so here what we are saying that if every previous value like one is less than two then we return a minus one this is the, just the syntax that the sort uses but what happens is that if this case is true then we return a minus one otherwise we return a plus one minus one means that this previous will be placed before the next one if we do this in a reverse way which means that if we do this greater than that means it's going to be sort Sort of reverse order so here you can see that now it is reverted which means now it's going in the descending order so this means that if the previous number is greater than the next number then we say minus one which means that this next is going to be placed before the previous number so that's how this works so this is just the syntax that you can watch from this video copy and then try it out as well okay so we talked about uh, sort and this is just just for example there could be other conditions that you could also apply within this function but make sure that when you return this minus one and plus one that means that previous is this one and next is this one so whenever we have this condition the minus one means that this previous is going to be placed before the next so we have to put the condition according now let's talk about another method so we got for each let's say so we got let's say days and week if we wanted to print them without the for loop this is how we, we would do that so here you can see that we have this for loop but we could also do is we could use the for each loop here so we could say days in week dot for each and here we can provide a function inside which we actually get each element in this function every time so here we would get the day and then we could just console log that day here so we could say console log day now this is far easier than this index 7 logic because here we are identifying this days and week and then we are using a number and then we are doing a bunch of things here as well but instead of doing that we could just do this as well so if i do this go back to my browser refresh you see all the logs here which are coming from this exact line so if i put a breakpoint refresh this means that we are using this array and we are using for each and then in this function inside this we get this day as a parameter so first time the day that we get is monday so we are doing a console log directly second time we get tuesday as you can see here then we get wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday boom and so we can use the for each method right there all right so let's see filter let's say if we have a situation like this combined basket and let's say we have to create separate baskets for grape and apples so let's say we have this as the initial basket just like this so we have this one and then we have this one okay and then we don't have these baskets at all so we, we have only a combined basket but we don't have the grapes basket or the apple basket in this case if i wanted to create two different baskets from this but one for apple and one for grape then what can i do so i can use the filter method in that case so here if i say combined basket you can see that we get all of these but if i had to create a new grapes basket what i can do is that i can say cons grapes basket and here i can use combine basket dot filter all right let's actually type this in the code so we can see it there so here we can say combine basket dot filter and in this one also just like the for each 
we get each item right here so we can say element here and then in the filter what happens is that this filter will return a new array just like this and that array will be assigned to grapes basket now what we want is to take out each grape from this combined basket and only keep those into the grapes basket so from this function we need to return either true or false this is really important so if let's say we return true then this grapes basket will contain everything so if i check the grapes basket you see it has everything just like the combined basket why because we are returning true from the function we, are, we don't have any other condition if i return false from this then the grapes basket will be empty why because we are returning a false which means that it will only keep those elements for which we return a true from this function so we only want to keep this grapes so we can say hey if the element equals grape then we return true or we return false in other case so this condition will actually evaluate to true or false so i can do something like this or even if i go to very beginner level we could do something like this we could say if this is true then return true else return false so if we do this and now if we check the grape basket you see that we only got grape yay so we got a condition and we took a combined array and then got it out and then only got the grapes basket similarly we could have done the same for the apples we got the apples basket here and then we are going to compare this with this and then if we refresh we can see that we got the grapes basket and we got the apples basket super cool right now this whole condition can be shortened to just be this return this that's exactly the same as writing all of this because this will either evaluate to true so we are saying hey if this is true return true if this is false return false so that's that's too much so we could just say return whatever is evaluated from this condition and that's it similarly we could say the same thing for this so if this is evaluated to be true then this will return true otherwise this will return false so if i refresh now we say grapes basket we say apples basket and they are fine all right so we also have other functions that we can talk about one is map so if we want to change the value of the original array to something else or add things to it or remove things from that we can use something called map let's say we have books but we don't have let's say the publisher title so every every book is published by a publisher for instance my book which is i'm not sure if you have seen that or not but this is the book that i wrote the angular cookbook so this one has been published by this publisher which is pack so or you can see the name better here so this is the pack publisher so let's suppose we have the same publisher but the original array does not contain this information and what we want to create is an array that has the same elements but with a bit of modified scenario so we can ca call this publisher as the modification so let's say if, if we create another array that says book with publisher then what we can do is that we can do something like books.map this map means that we are going to return an object or a value that is modified so each element in the book right now is an object which means that in this map function just like the filter function we're gonna receive a book now by default we would want to return the book itself which means that the returning element is the exact same object so if i just do this and show you what happens you will see that we initiate the books then we come to this point where we have books and then for each book this map function runs so first book is going to be my angular cookbook second book is going to be angular cookbook v2 and you can see that we are returning the same object back so when we do this for the third book as well you can see that after this whole map is finished and we jump to this line the books with publisher is exactly same as the original one right this books is exactly the same as this book so it's exactly the same so what if we wanted to change something as i said we want to add the name of the publisher to the book so here what we could do is that we could say we are going to say book dot publisher equals heck okay so when we do this let's see what happens so here we are initiating the books then we come to this line with the map function it goes inside we have the book here which only has two properties author and name but now we are adding another property that is publisher so now the book also has this publisher property and now if i return this book with the publisher property you will see that once we get past this method now the books with publisher has an array which has publisher pack for each of the element all right the great thing about this is that we don't have to write this for every single book we just ran one map 
that and then it added this same code for every book now imagine this was 10 tens of books what would happen in that case so let's say if i have something like this now this is a lot of books right so if i had to do this manually for everything that would take a lot of time so that's not really a good idea so instead what we have is this so now if i go forward with the book publisher you can see that we have the book with 15 different books and now all i need to do is just write this map code add this value to each of the element and once we are forward you can see that each element no matter which i pick we can see the publisher packed here all right so for each element we can add that now it could be 200 elements 5000 elements if, if we just write this code this four line of code we are modifying the entire data using that so that is the power of map with the array function now that we have this map function covered let's see what else can we do the sum and the every method let's talk about every and sum so let's say we have top followers but if we have another array let's say followers with activity so let's say we have we have top followers dot map here we actually get some names so here let's say top followers dot map we get the follower name and here we return an object with name follower name and then active set to true okay so we we have this variable let's see what this logs to kind of go to the console here you will see that the followers with activity is an array of objects we have john wick Fahad, Raja, Sebel, Salman, Usman, all of these are active. Let's say if we had to turn one of these as non-active, let's say John Wick is not active. So we can do that by doing followers with activity index zero, which is John Wick dot active set to false. So if we do this, then you can see that only one of these elements, only one of these, these followers are false. Now, if we had to check is every follower active on our stream what we could do is we could say followers with activity dot every in this one we get each follower and then we say follower dot active equals to true so what we're trying to say here is that let's say the first follower with activity dot active equals false so if we do this and if we run this function if i can prettify it for you so here what we are checking is once is everyone active equals so we are checking this so what we are saying here is that hey is every follower active in my stream and we are checking it by using the every method and for each follower we are checking if each follower's active property is true now this could be the case but since we manually set one of these which is john wick to false you can see that this one will result as in false so if i check is everyone active you can see false right why because one of these are false similarly if i remove this but if i now check is everyone active you can see it's true so the every method is really helpful if you want to check does every element in the array satisfy a condition the condition for our case is that everyone should be active so if everyone is active this would result in a true but if even one of them is false whether it's the first item or the last item let's say we have top followers but let's say if we wanted to say three which is essentially zero one two three let's say salman is not active so if salman is not active even then this will evaluate to false even if one of the array elements does not satisfy the condition the whole variable becomes false so this is really essential to check if we have every single element in the array satisfying a particular condition if every single element satisfied that we get a true if even one of them is false then we get a false so this is to check every particular element now now there's another method that is quite similar to every and that is called sum the sum function will do exactly similar to every but the difference is that every will only return if every element satisfies the condition sum will return a true even if one of the elements satisfy the condition. okay so this is important to understand even if one of the array elements are passing then we can say that's good so let's say i'm a really i'm a really bad teacher and i'm not expecting anyone to pass so by default i'm saying hey everyone is failing this case so i'm saying false 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 so no student of mine is passing in that case i would have a function that i can say cons has anyone has students dot sum and here it's going to be the same thing we would have a callback function and here we could say return in this sum function we are going to get each student and i'm going to say student dot pass equals to true which means that if any single student is passing then 
this would become true so if i check it right now has anyone passed you can see false why because not even one of the students has passed in this case so let's try with a different data in which let's say this abc has passed so if this one is true and if i check the same function now and if i check the has student pass it gives us true so this is counter of every sum will return a true even if one of the elements satisfy the condition all right so this is opposite of that hope this makes sense so i'm going to copy this and sum so here we talked about is everyone active let's talk about students here we give the example of one student and then here we have used this one and here we got this one and then we check has anyone passed okay so we covered sum we covered sort we covered reverse covered map last index of join for each filter every concat so i believe we have covered every single item so to say there is one thing that we also can cover which is this two string method so if i do combine basket two string then this also evaluates to the exact same thing so we previously we did combine basket dot join that also evaluates to the same thing but this is okay for simpler string if i do this for complex scenarios for complex objects this will not work for instance if i say followers with with activity which is an array of objects if i do a two string here you get this object 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 blah blah blah, blah, blah. so this is not actually it all right however if we wanted to do a join what would happen we also get the object 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 so this essentially does exactly the same as join so what you would want to do is you, when you want to convert this into a string you might want to see which element type do we have do we have a string a number an array an object what do we have a boolean maybe so whatever we have we have to use the two string method accordingly but if it's just a string then it kind of equals to whatever we see here with the separator so it, it kind of converts this into to a comma separated elements similarly if we had numbers like one two three four five six and if i do a two string in here you see that it converts all these numbers into a string and then it combines them using the join method and that is equal to the join one but without any parameter or separator so it's quite exactly the same okay so we talked about two string and that is it i think we are good for arrays for today and do me a favor if you have a github account and if you're watching this uh, just go and start this repository all right i hope that you liked the video if you did press the thumbs up button and also subscribe to the channel and if you want to support my channel you can support me on patreon for as low as five dollars a month that really supports the channel grow and i'm gonna see you in this next video till then happy coding